Hello, my name is Dylan Young, and today I will be providing a first look into Moosent, uh, which is Sitecore's recent acquisition. Today, I'm kicking off the series uh, on this topic. Uh, if you haven't uh, done so already, definitely check out the playlist that I'll be showing up on the screen right now. Um, this will contain probably roughly around 10 to 15 videos in the series after, uh, after a while. Um, obviously, today's video is, if you're watching this just after it was released, this is the first video, so there won't be that many videos in the playlist. Uh, but definitely feel free to subscribe to this channel, and you'll get notified of uh, videos I'll be releasing on this topic. So today's video, like I said, is introductory into the topic. Um, so today's focus will be setting up your account if you haven't done so already. Um, so let's start out by going out to a browser and most of the the videos in the series will do, be done in your browser so you won't have to deal with docker or, or deal with any sort of local environments in this series you'll be mostly focusing on configuration and working with the SaaS product of musent that uh, sitecore acquired so uh, once you're in here, uh, if this is your first time working with Moose Send, you can definitely register for free. They actually have a free account, uh, kind of a trial subscription, um, where you can just go in and, and start playing with Moose Send right off the bat. Uh, it's definitely worth checking out uh, compared to EXM, where you have to, uh, you know, kind of, sometimes there's a licensing part, part of it, and then there's also, you might have to get your developers involved to actually start using it, there's a little bit of more of a, a process there. Whereas Moosend, you can play with, you don't even have to necessarily have it uh, associated with your Sitecore instance to start playing with it and start seeing some of the capabilities of this, this product. So feel free to register for free today. I'm actually gonna be using a, an account I already have. I've actually already have enrolled in a subscription for it, but relatively cheap compared to some of the other, other products that Sitecore provides. So we're, I'm just gonna go ahead and log in to that account. And actually it's already on the screen, so I'll just click log in. And so now we're in the dashboard of Moosend. Now there's a few things here that, depending on your state of setting up your account, will either be checked as complete or, or not. Um, so if this is your first time setting up your account, if you're just registered, you're going to have all these that you still need to do. Uh, we're not going to cover all these in today's session. We're going to talk about the first one and a little caveat to the first one, some other options that, of configuration that you can do uh, to Moosend to get it set up. And then in subsequent videos, I'm going to actually talk about uh, your mailing lists, how to set those up, how to add users to them and then even into uh, importing subscribers and things like that to your mailing lists. Uh, there's two things I'm gonna be showing today. I'm gonna be showing how to set up a from sender uh, email uh, account, and then I'll also be showing up how to set up your landing pages to uh, kind of run off your, your subdomain or your domain, uh, custom domain name. And I can't remember off the top of my head, but if you have a free account, I don't, know if you can necessarily do the second part of that the custom domain name just because of the fact that this is more of a premium feature but um if you're if you set up your account i've got i can't remember what i'm paying for this account but it's not much okay so to get started i'm gonna show the the branding and domain side stuff first uh so we'll just uh, click this little setting up here and click on branding and domains so once you're here, there is two things that you'll see. You'll have like a tabbed interface. One is the platform. This is how you access Moosend. You can actually set up, and I'm not gonna really cover this, but you could set up a subdomain for your, your own domain. So for this video series, I'm using my Ignium, uh, which is my company's name, uh, igniumdigital.com. Uh, so if I wanted to, I could set up moosend.com igniumdigital.com and then I could have all my backend users uh, essentially use that domain to administer or work with Moosend directly. That's kind of a fancy way of working with it. There's nothing wrong with just doing igniumdigital.com. I 
really don't see much issue there. But the other capabilities of a custom domain is on the landing page side. So I, I see this being more of a one that you might want to customize because there might be users going to these pages and you might want it to be a more friendlier experience for your users. So what I've done here is I've actually already configured one, but there's just to show what I did here, um, all I did was clicked on landing pages and then I clicked on add new custom domain. So if you click on that option, um, it doesn't give us this option anymore. You can only have one uh, landing page domain or platform custom domain in your account. So I've already created my landing page domain, so it's not showing it as an option. So just gonna go ahead and click and, and edit this just to show what's going on here. It's a pretty simple process. You're gonna pick a, a subdomain under your domain that represents the domain that you're gonna have. So basically, I chose email.igniumdigital.com. You could choose mail, you could choose, uh, you could call it moosen.igniumdigital.com if you wanted to. It shouldn't be the same one as your platform. It should be a different one. It should be something that's more friendly sounding, etc. cetera. Uh, once you pick that, then you're gonna get this kind of screen. It's gonna say something about C names and you're, it's gonna mention your DNS. If you're a marketer in this case, you're gonna to need to pass this information off to your IT team. If you're someone that's a, kind of a mix of the roles and you might know a little bit more about this and be able to modify this. But if all this is foreign to you, then you should you know, write an email real quick and just send this off to your IT team to uh, manage. Uh, so once you do that, and I'm just gonna show this real quick because I have actually configured this. Uh, obviously I'm more of an IT focused uh, developer here so I can actually show this as well. So you can just copy this name and then you're gonna want to go to where you manage your DNS records at. Uh, for me, for the IngliumDigital.com account, I actually manage this with Netlify uh, just because that's where all our, our site is hosted. Um, so I just made it easy for the Netlify setup to, to host it over there. And then you're just gonna create a new, a new record uh, with the record type of CNAME. Now I'm just showing what this looks like from a Netlify standpoint, but obviously if you had your DNS record uh, managed by somebody else, the, the interface here would be different. Uh, for, for you, but the general concepts would be the same. Some of this would be slightly different, but essentially you would take C name and then you would specify whatever the name you used before in Moose End, you would use it that here. So email, uh, in this case for Netlify, it just says you, you just need to specify a subdomain like www or FTP, and it will automatically append the the actual domain to that. And then the value is gonna be the value it, it just listed on the, actually that's not the correct value, that was something I copied earlier, but it's just this value, so. So it's just this value is what you're gonna have there. And then you click okay, and essentially you'd be configured. Um, going back here, I actually already have it defined and so there's nothing we need to do here, but um, if we go back to the interface, you just need to verify it. It actually wasn't verified in the last screenshots or the last page I was on because the last time I checked it, it wasn't verified yet. So if I click verify and I'll just give this a name. Once it verifies, it's gonna give you the configure your custom domain. So once you do that, you can give it a page title. Um, you can enable a custom 404 page if you wanted to, which I, I believe, yes, you would. Uh, you can either select uh, an active landing page that you've already desi designed, or you can, you can specify a, a 404 page on your server for this. But I actually don't wanna do that. I'm just gonna give page style Ignium Digital. If I had a favicon, um, I would specify here. I actually don't off the top of my head right now. Um, so I'll just save. And then it says custom domain saved and it's actually saying it's verified. So now if we, when we get to the part of this um, series where I cover landing pages, we'll actually be able to navigate to them from email.igniumdigital.com, which is pretty cool. 
Uh, we can also navigate them from the M pages as well. So that's nothing. Um, it's just a little bit cooler to be able to do that. So that's pretty much it for the custom domains and, and kind of building your branding around kind of white labeling the Moosense system to, uh, you know, white label its services as, as kind of your company's labels. The other thing that, so that one's not particularly specific to setting up your account. It's useful because as you get into landing pages and things like that, it's useful for branding per perspective. But um, the, the, the one thing you do need to set up uh, when you first set up your account is a s email sender. Um, so an email sender, and to get there, you just click on the little settings icon up here in the top right, and you click on senders. And then once you're on that page, it lists out the emails that it will send from. So if you're if you just registered or you haven't set up this account, this stuff with your account yet, this will be blank. So the next step is just uh, creating a sender and I'll, I'll kind of walk through this process first. Uh, what this is, is and to just clarify is you can set up multiple of these and it's actually kind of useful if you have maybe multiple different types of domains that send an email. Uh, maybe you have, you know, you're a company that has like 10 different domains. Uh, you could set up different senders for those 10 different domains and use those as maybe a way to kind of differentiate different campaigns that you're running, or you can have, you know, multiple email addresses from the same domain. Uh, in what I'm showing below, I actually have two different, same domain, two different emails. So one's my email that I use all the time, and then the hello one, which is kind of the sales one that I use. Uh, to get started and just adding one, it's pretty simple. You just click on the add new sender button. And then you just give it a name. Um, in this case, uh, whatever you want to do. If you had a support, for example, and this is just a friendly name that you give it, not the email address. And then you can give it an email address, which is, I don't actually have this domain, so I'll have to delete this. But, um, but yes, a support email or whatever that it is that you're sending from, whatever you typically send from. Or, or if you have more than one, like I said, I guess it didn't like support. Um, that's unusual. I've never seen that before. So maybe just a, a weird nuance of the Moose End system. So I have this John Smith. I'm actually not going to uh, move forward with this. I What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to delete the hello one that I have. And I'm just gonna add it again. So hello is what I'll call it, or sales. And I'm not sure why you couldn't do support on the last one, but, um, and then hello at avmdigital.com. And then save sender. And so now that shows up again. Before it will show it up in the list, uh, it will send you an email. So. Uh, check your email account. Um, I have mine listed here. I'm obviously going to gray out a lot of this, but it will send you a notification and then you have to confirm the, the campaign sender. So you just click here and that will take you back to Moose End. It took me to, it opened up my uh, Edge browser accidentally. So it it took you to a URL and then it verified it essentially. So now it's showing up as verified. If I refresh this one I had in Chrome open, you can see that it's now showing that it's verified. Now, if this is your first time setting up this, this screen, the other thing that you will need to do is set up your SPF and DKIM. This will need to also be set up per domain. So because I'm adding uh, multiple emails from the same domain. Once I set it up for one domain, then it will it will verify it for all the domains. So it's just something to notice. That's why we don't have to set it kind of again for this. So to do this, you can just kind of click on one of those options, and then it gives you this. Again, we're going back to the DNS records. If you're not, if you're if you're a marketer here, then you definitely want to pass this information off to your IT staff so that they can set up this information. They're just setting up text records um, with the name here and then the value there, and then the same for the sender policy framework. Uh, just a text record with a 
uh, text record value. Um, so kind of two text records uh, uh, with different names and values in them. And I've done this already for my DNS records in Netlify. So, and, and you can have multiple text records. You don't need to have just one. I host this with, there's actually multiple text records in my DNS record uh, definitions here because I have some uh, Office 365 stuff con configured for text records for authentication purposes or verification purposes to verify that I own the domain. I'm obviously not gonna show all this stuff to you. I'm gonna blur out a lot of it. But, but like I said, if you're a marketer, just there's some initial setup that you're gonna to have to work with your IT staff to kind of set up this, these, these pieces of information. And once you do that, these things will be verified for you. So if I cancel and return back, then what you wanna see is that all this has got checks on it and that you're set and ready to go. So that completes today's session. Uh, from here, we're gonna, the next video in the series is gonna start looking at your mailing lists. How do you uh, add users to the mailing list? How do you, how, how can you bulk upload uh, lists or users to your different lists that you're defining. Like I said, if you want to check out this series, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Um, I also have a, will have a playlist on the Moose End content that I'll be uploading. So please uh, uh, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content about Moose End. And uh, uh, thank you for your time today.